In his first season at Ohio State, our next guest led the Buckeyes to just their sixth perfect season in school history. Prior to that, he won two national championships at Florida, and he coached a quarterback that you may have heard of. Mm. His name is Tim Tebow, I think. That's correct, mm, right? Tebow. That guy? Uh, we welcome to the desk, Urban Meyer. How are you? I'm doing good and good to be with you. It's there, good to have you here. There's just never anything to ask Urban about. Never. So <laughs> I will start with the latest news. We need you to please expand upon this, but obviously, case was closed on your tailback, Carlos Hyde. No charges pursued, yet you suspended him three games for what you called conduct not representative of your your program and your university. Well, I first uh, heard like everyone else, uh, then I heard conflicting stories, and then I spoke with actually the police afterwards, and they said an average, you know, just not an average, but a normal person, there's nothing there. There's no charges to be filed. However, our guys, when I saw the video, he needs to walk away from that situation and we're taught over and over and over again um, to get away get out of that situation that's not you're a high profile guy you represent an incredible institution you have uh, uh, that's that's nothing you need to be part of get out of there so that's why he was suspended is there any wrong place wrong time involved everything mm -hmm. about that situation mm -hmm. was wrong uh, when you watch the video the, the beginning is very harmless but then get out and he started to that's what's the most disappointing thing is uh, you know, police officers, they deal with 30 to 40 of those a week. <laughs> However, not a football player. Don't nope. do that and get out of there. So that's why. Coach, uh, f first of all, I appreciate that explanation, and thanks for enlightening us because there's, we certainly weren't aware that you actually saw a video, et cetera, et cetera. But let me move on beyond that to a bigger point that you had uh, that was associated with your name as it pertains to how you want to impose discipline on your program. Uh, according to a couple of reports, anything, associated with, uh, I, if I'm remembering correctly, it was talking about as it pertains to young ladies, women in college, it, I mean, just the mere accusation of doing something wrong, guys are going to be held accountable. It was almost like a guilty until proven in innocent kind of thing going on. And I wanted you to elaborate on that because the reports that came out, it threw me aback. As a guy raised by women, I could definitely be sensitive to that and appreciate it. But as a guy that went into college, I can also see where guys might find themselves in the situation where they could get falsely accused about some things. And I wanted you to elaborate on your thinking in regards to that kind of stuff. Well, I, I give credit. You know, I, I was raised in a house that's not acceptable. And I still got some old-fashioned uh, values about that. And I, and I explain it. The, the thing is, Stephen, about our players are told that I'd say thousands of times that there are certain areas not to go, and that's one of them. That's if you get charged with something, you're dismissed immediately. No phone calls, no group hugs, nothing, you're done. <laughs> um, if you are in a situation, you're suspended immediately, and then I want to hear the story, and I just think that's different than typical college nonsense. When you start dealing with, uh, uh, when I see and hear some of the things that go on today, I, I, don't, I don't understand that, and I'm certainly not, if I'm in a position as a head football coach that they're not going to play for us, uh, and if the police would have came back and said that he was charged, that the, the, the player would no longer be with Ohio State. Hmm. Coach, speaking of charges, yeah, speaking of charges, skip, skip, mm -hmm. skip, allow me to just speaking of charges, coach. Uh, one of the things that uh, I guess it could be perceived as me being critical uh, of you. I didn't see it that way. I thought it was me being complimentary. Uh, in, in the aftermath of the Aaron Hernandez arrest. Uh, I, I thought that I would have loved to have heard your voice sooner. I would have loved to have heard you speak more extensively than you did on your feelings in regards to that. But more importantly, what took me aback was your wife, Shelly, and your daughter, Gigi, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, uh, going on Twitter and speaking on your behalf. And I was saying to myself, why does anybody need to speak on Urban Meyer's behalf? He's done nothing wrong. He's an exceptional coach. He teaches the right values. He wins. I saw no reason why anybody should feel the need to come to your defense about anything uh, based on what I had to say and what other people were saying about you in the aftermath of Aaron Hernandez's arrest. Is there anything that you would like to add, anything that you would like to explain in regards to how you elected to speak on that matter? Well, we have a very close family, and I had a little conversation with him after the fact because I don't get involved with the social media, and I did hear <laughs> it as well. And, and, uh, but I, I get it. You know, your daughter's some things are being said and, and when you take a position of leadership which we all have in some way when you're held accountable for other people's behavior if you're held accountable for your own behavior absolutely that's the way it is you know you do something wrong you face your punishment what's difficult is when you're held accountable for someone else's behavior even when it's years after you've uh, coached them but that's 
I mean, I'm the one that decided to be a coach, and that's part of the, 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 the responsibility of being a coach. So uh, this particular incident is sickening. This particular incident is, is, is beyond comprehension. So I, at first I was taken aback like most, and uh, obviously uh, there's an investigation still going on, but th this will be in my mind the rest of my career. You know, anytime mm -hmm. you deal with any recruit, any, mm -hmm. any situation, it's, it's in the back of your mind. And, you, you know, could you have done more? I don't, I don't know, but to say you don't think about it, it's every day. Mm. So did anything in his behavior at Florida indicate that this was remotely possible? No, no. Th no. This incident? This, yes. Absolutely not. I mean, I'm not even sure how you comprehend that. Um, no. And as I recall, I think you instituted the All-American Bricks at Florida. Wasn't that in your program? And, and now they have already removed Aaron Hernandez Brick. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's a lot like what the New England Patriots did. And, uh, you, know, you want to disassociate yourself. Uh, Florida is an incredible, New England Patriots are incredible. You know, the one, one of the winningest of all time. University of Florida, incredible university with incredible people. They want to separate themselves. So uh, I, I would imagine something like that was going to happen. Yeah. Coach, let me get to Ohio State because obviously you, you're, you're fresh off of a perfect season. You did an absolutely <laughs> fabulous job. I, I, I knew you'd be successful. I didn't think you'd be perfect, but you pulled it off. Uh, I mean, how, how do you describe, I mean, how were you able to pull off the job that you did last year, and what are your expectations for this upcoming season in light of what you achieved last year? It seems like it, it can't get any better, that's for sure. At least it seems that way. You no, know, the older you get, you realize the value of leadership, and, and um, to say 10 years ago I really appreciated leadership like I do now, uh, I'd say 12 months ago I didn't appreciate it like I do now. We had a team that started the season, if you would ask me, September 20th, I said, you're looking, I did. I talked to him, we're, you're, you're staring straight down a seven and five season. We're not very good. Uh, we're not playing very hard. We just have to go recruit and get this thing going. And then something really magical happened, probably as refreshing two months as I've ever had. I saw a group of players take over the team. I saw a group of leaders that say enough's enough. Ohio State, they lost seven the year before. We're not, this is not what we're doing. And the, we, we had a couple conversations as a staff and players about the players, when the players evaluate, they're not playing. You either play or you evaluate. And our kids weren't bad guys, but they were certainly evaluating, why are we doing this? Why are we practicing so hard? Why are Tuesdays like this? And when you do that, you're not playing. And then, I mean, our staff and players, you talk about clicking and hitting it right, right at the right time. Well, that team went from being a team that was 7-5 and five to by the end of the year was, could probably compete with most teams, if not every team in America. Wow. You have a supremely talented quarterback in Braxton Miller who effectively wound up playing in the shadows of Johnny football, obviously the reigning Heisman winner, and he's dominated the offseason headlines. Compare and contrast <laughs> Braxton with Johnny on the field, just on the field. You know, I've not seen Johnny play very much. I can compare him to maybe a Tim or an Alex, the guys that I've worked with. Uh, he's, the, the one thing that I'm not sure everybody's aware of, he's the most humble big-time athlete I've ever been around. Ever. I mean, he, hi he uh, doesn't hide, but he is so into... You know, I heard Jadavian Clowney, someone made a comment that he doesn't go out at night because he doesn't want stuff. Braxton, the same way. Braxton stays away, and it's really cool to be around a guy like that. And, and now his work ethic wasn't where it needed to be because mm -hmm. he's so good, so gifted that he was Big Ten Player of the Year, and he was not a great, player, great mm -hmm. quarterback last year. So he has taken his game, his concentration, his motivation to a, a new level, and I, I can't wait. I mean, we started out as fourth. I can't wait to see what's going to drag out on the field because it's different than it was a year ago. Wow. H how would you project Coach, him as a pro quarterback? Hang on one second. Oh, he has it all. So yeah. he, he, what he doesn't have is complete grasp of the game. What he has is, you know, about the throw. He's not a great thrower as far as when you say throwing the ball, protection, understanding protection, understand where all five guys are. He's not there yet, but as far as release, arm strength, footwork, he's got it all. He can play NFL quarterback. Yeah. Go ahead, Stephen A. Coach, Skip, Skip Bayless didn't ask you this question. I'm going to put myself on a hot seat, Coach, because <laughs> uh -oh. if there's one person in this world that I can imagine who loves Tim Tebow more than Skip Bayless, it would happen to be you. Now, I'm of the mindset. I just want to, I want to, I want to fend myself. I want to protect myself here just a little bit, Coach. Tim Tebow is a good kid, great kid. He's at the it factor. He's a winner. He belongs in the NFL. 
I just don't think he can throw, Coach. Is it wrong for me to say that, sir? I mean, feel free. I will throw myself at the mercy of your court. <laughs> is it wrong for me to say that? Jeez. It's Tim Tebow. This is, I'm not sure people are aware of this. He is the second most efficient passer ever to play college football. Sam Skip Bradford. Bayless is aware I, I, of that. I know. That. Sam Bradford's number one. He's number two. Uh, people say he's a system quarterback. The good thing is in the National Football League right now, there are a handful or even more than a handful of systems that Tim can certainly play quarterback in. Can he play in traditional West Coast offense? I've never coached it. Uh, I, I can only speak to what he can do. And so, Stephen, I really believe that, you know, I've, I've studied the 49ers. We studied the Seahawks. We studied the Carolina Panthers and RG3. Mm -hmm. The style of systems that are now entering the National Football League, can Tim Tebow do that? There's no question he did it. He did it in the SEC conference at a probably like it's never been done before. And obviously the SEC are dealing with all, almost all NFL mm -hmm. players and anyways. Urban, you might be biased, but do you believe that he should be a starting quarterback right now in the NFL? I, I don't, I can't say right now. I think he needs to learn the game in the NFL. I think he's at the perfect place. He's behind our, obviously the best coach in the, in the in the National Football League, maybe in all of pro sports. Okay. And behind, most importantly, he's behind Tom Brady. Okay. Tom Brady's going to teach him how to play yes. quarterback. Because NFL is much different than college. College is mm -hmm. much different than high school. Mm -hmm. And so he had the luxury. He came hey. to Florida, and he was behind Chris Leak. People don't remember that. We won a national championship with Chris Leak oh, okay. and Tim Tebow rolling in there a little bit. So I think he's in the perfect place. Stay in the background, learn the game, and then go take over. Well said. See, Coach? Coach, coach, I agree with that. Okay. One thousand percent. I agree with that. You do not agree with that. Don't coach. start that. Hold it. Don't Co lie coach, to this man. Coach Urban Meyer. Coach, no, I would never lie. <laughs> coach Urban Meyer, I have said that the man needed to be a backup. He needed to learn the game. Mm -hmm. Skip Bayless has been saying he should be starting. He could win on this level. Leave him be. Throw him to the wolves. I said he's with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Talk to me in about three years, and I'm willing to. I'm willing that to. That has been his argument. Skip. That has not been. He has <laughs> steadfastly maintained that he cannot throw. Oh, and please! And if you cannot throw, you cannot can't throw. start in the National Football League. Gentlemen, you cannot argue this right I, now I, in front of the coach because he is getting ready to go. Coach Urban Meyer, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, some civility you brought to the yeah, desk. You did. Amazingly. You calmed us down. You calmed us yes, down. Yes, you did, Coach. And yeah. you and you end the show with Coach, us. I'm going to be nice about Tebow. Okay. I'm going to be thank nice you. about Tebow from now on, Meanwhile, Coach, just because of you. Just I'm because of you.